guest in this episode is Marco Smith, a Filipino English professional rugby player. He shares stories about his childhood in the Philippines, how he and his brothers enjoyed playing with the neighborhood kids, and how much they loved spending time with family and relatives. Let's get to know more about Marcos in this episode. Hi, Marcos. Welcome to Stronger Together, the GMA Pinoy TV podcast. Hi, um, hi, Tony. Thank you for having me on. It's been a long time coming, but whenever I heard about this, I got really excited about coming on. So, salamat. Just to give everybody a brief background about you, Marcos. Your father is British and your mom is a Filipina. And you were born in Manila before your family moved to Singapore when you were eight years old. Do you remember anything about your childhood in the Philippines? Yeah, for me, growing up in the Philippines was unbelievable. From firstly, the weather. Uh, obviously, I've lived here in England now for eight or nine years. And the weather is one thing I certainly miss over in the Philippines. As well as that, being able to go to San Agustin, spent weekends all the time outside playing with my brothers, playing with different kids from Philippines as well as expat kids and some of the times there I'll definitely remember for for the rest of my life and it put me up it set me up for, in a good position for the future so you have two more brothers you were all born in the Philippines yes I'm 24 my brother is 22 and my youngest brother is 21 so Luke is 22 and Tomas is 21 and we all went to school there for a few years they can't quite understand Tagalog but I can so uh it allows me to listen to all my aunties and uncles over there. And if they're talking about me, I can understand it. So it's a, it's a good little trick to have. <laughs> Do you have any favorite childhood memory with your brothers? I think for us, it was just every time it was like a daily occurrence. Whenever the Tahoe man started walking past our house, we used to always get it. We were addicted to it growing up. It all come, surrounded around food and getting together as a family. Uh, whether that was lechon, uh, koali, which I used to love eating, sinigang. It was nice just to be in a, in a family environment where everyone's happy to be together. Everyone's so excited to spend time with each other. And I love that family element of it. And we all did. So uh, that was special. Do you have a big Filipino family? Uh, yeah. So over in Philippines, my mom is one of five. So she's got four siblings over there, all with children. So I've, I've got a lot of cousins. Some of them have, have migrated to, to America. But one of my uncles, Tito Boy, is in Cagayan de Oro with his family now. So I haven't seen them for a while, but I've got a big Filipino side of my family. We spent a lot of time together. Last summer, we were over in America for my cousin's wedding. It felt like a, a school reunion, a family reunion, which was amazing because obviously the last time I saw them was probably eight or nine years ago and to reconnect after so long it felt nice in my heart and it was nice to reconnect with my cousins who I played with when I was younger and, and now that we're more like adults we experience different things together which was enjoyable and, and we've got a family group chat and everything so we're always texting each other always sending funny videos and uh, it's brilliant for me. That's nice that you are still able to be in touch with your relatives. Yeah 100% Philippines playing a massive part in my life Ever since I was born now, I'm always happy and proud to say I'm born a Filipino and uh, and therefore my family are, are a huge part of my life as well. And if ever I get the chance to meet them over here in England or fly across the world, wherever I need to go, I'll be the first on the plane to go see them because I love spending time with them. We're always laughing, we're always doing karaoke and uh, it's good fun. <laughs> Does your family follow any Filipino tradition that you remember? Do you still do stuff that, you know, Filipino families do? Yes. Yeah, so my mom and I pray on FaceTime regularly. My mom's my mom's very religious because I don't live at home anymore. We pray as often as we can together. It's a nice moment for me and my mom to, to spend together. And as well as that, give thanks for, for everything that God's blessed us with and that we hope for in the future. So that's nice for me and my mom to do. As well as that, during the Christmas time, we spend a lot of time together. We do midnight mass. We do all that sort of stuff, which for us, obviously over here, is slightly different in the English tradition, but we've, we've stuck with that. And as well as that, after every family party and gathering, like I said, we do karaoke. My uncle, my uncle Andy uh, lives here in London. He's lived here for 20 years, but he's a top man and he always brings his karaoke box uh, over to our house and puts pressure on me to sing. So uh, it's good fun and uh, it's different to 
So if my friends see it, they, they get slightly shocked. How was it like growing up in a multi-racial family and living in a foreign country? I think my brothers and I are extremely lucky. My mum loves Philippines. She's so passionate about, about her country that ever since I was young, she's instilled that in us the way, like I said, the way that it's so family orientated, the way that everyone's over there so generous and so welcoming to anyone who, who comes into their house or... and. That starts around around the kitchen, around the, the dining room. There's always food available whenever my friends used to come around. When I was younger, they, they used to be in shock because uh, they didn't expect how much food there would be out at every single meal. My mum's always asking if they want any snacks. And and for me, that, that was that side. And then on, on the flip side, my dad, he's very English. Again, he's proud to be English. And some of the lessons he's taught me around being organised because he always jokes Filipinos sometimes aren't, aren't the best organized, but they're extremely good at other things as well. But I think the way they complemented each other allowed me and my two younger brothers to take what's best from both worlds. And we stick to strong traditions on both sides of, of my family. But like I said, we always love visiting Philippines. Has your dad embraced the Filipino culture also? Yeah, he has. He lived there for, I think, nine years or something, or 10 years, probably longer than that. And... He had some really good memories when he was a bit younger, living in Philippines. I think some of the things he did was with his expat friends, but as well as that, whenever we traveled to Cagayan de Oro or, or to see family, he would he would be there till the end. He'd be singing karaoke with us. And for us to see that as, as his sons was impressive and it gave us the confidence to do it as well, you know, especially as we were younger and, and probably a bit more shy. So yeah, he, he's definitely bought into it. He still doesn't eat rice for breakfast. He sticks with baked beans, <laughs> but he comes with us to midnight mass and prays with us when he needs to. So um, yeah, he, he's bought in, he's bought in. So you went to Singapore and then England? Yeah, so, so I moved to Singapore when I was about eight or nine. That's where you got exposed to the sport of rugby or did you start to learn about the sport while you were in the Philippines? So actually, I, I started to learn about the sport over in the Philippines. My dad played for Manila Nomads. My dad's actually played for Philippines back in the day. And at Manila Nomads, there was an airfield out the, out the back of the pitch where there was like a township that, that lived behind it. And uh, my dad and one of his uh, friends from the, from the club had an idea to start a, a minis rugby club because they, they enjoyed so much spending time at that, this sports club probably to extend their time there. They opened up a minis rugby team and first sort of people were me, my two younger brothers, my dad's friend's son, James, and, and we invited the kids from the township to join us. So our first session, I think there was nine of us playing touch rugby in the sun. And, and that's kind of where I, I first probably held a rugby ball. But the, with regards to, to rugby back then, it, it wasn't that big in Philippines. And so probably the biggest exposure I, I got was over in Singapore where um, there was more set up rugby clubs. But I do remember watching my dad, watching my mum. Mum used to play touch as well and, and watching them play rugby in Philippines. Did you try any other sport? Yeah, so I played a lot of football and, and basketball. I played for village basketball team in, in the tournaments that they used to have. So I've still got my, I think I still got somewhere my Odinetta shorts which is pretty cool. We have a lot of tournaments here in the summer, you know yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. very competitive. The parents were getting competitive as well, and uh, it was good. And I think it's important that you have a wide variety of sports that you do, because I feel that there's a lot of crossover in sports. Even when I was younger, I played a lot of football at the Army Barracks just outside Vanilla. And I used to train there on a Wednesday. I used to play rugby on a Friday. My schedule was pretty hectic, but the thing that I loved the most about it was the fact that I was outdoors competing and just enjoying myself. And I think that's the most important thing for young people is to, whatever they do, try and enjoy as much as they can. And I'm sure you'll be picking up and learning uh, new skills. Did your parents push you and your brothers to become athletes, or especially you? What was like the turning point for you when you realized that you wanted to become a professional athlete? Ever since I was young, I was obsessed with sports from Philippines to Singapore. Probably the biggest exposure I, I got was moving back to England, just because of the wide range of opportunities that you get over here in terms of playing hundreds of different schools who are all brilliant and exceeding at rugby. How old were you when you went back to England? 13. 
So I was still quite young, but even then, I remember my under 13 team, we had under 13 A's, B's, C's and D's. So that's four or five teams per age group. The scale on which sport is played over here, especially football, rugby, uh, cricket, is huge. And for me, I enjoy the aspect of trying to be the best out of, all, out of everyone. And in Philippines and Singapore, it's obviously a smaller pool of players, less players playing rugby at the time. And therefore, I wanted to challenge myself. And I think moving back here at that time was, was a God's blessing and, and a perfect time for me to get my head down. I was, uh, when I was younger, I wanted to be a football player. I wanted to play soccer. Um, I wanted to play for Man United and, and, and these sort of teams. Gave that a good go, but my school was more of a rugby school. My dad preferred his rugby and I wouldn't say they pushed me, but they were very supportive. My mum is my motivator, so she gets the best out of me when I'm not doing well. And, and my dad's there to give me pointers as well. So uh, they've both been brilliant and, and so have my brothers. Global Pinoy's watch new and all-time favorite shows on GMA Pinoy TV. Bubble Gang, Fast Talk with Moya Bunda, 24 Horas, Abot Kamay na Pangara, Kapuso Mo, Jessica Soho, and Voltus 5 Legacy, and award-winning news programs, documentaries, lifestyle shows, and many more on GMA Live TV and GMA News TV. GMA Channel are available in the U.S. through various pay TV services. To know more, visit gmapinoytv.com slash subscribe or follow us at GMA Pinoy TV on social media. Mga Global Pinoy subscribers ng GMA Pinoy TV sa U.S., Canada, Singapore at Hong Kong. You can now watch Kapuso shows on the go. Just download the mobile app of your pay TV provider and enjoy TV everywhere in the U.S via Xfinity Stream, Spectrum TV app, Cox Contour app, and Optimum TV app. In Canada, via Bell 5 TV, Rogers Ignite TV, and TELUS Optic TV. And in Hong Kong, via the Now TV app. TV Everywhere is available to existing GMA subscribers only. Contact your pay TV provider or visit gmapinoytv.com slash subscribe to learn more. Welcome back. Marcos talks about wanting to inspire more people through his sport and making a difference to help young athletes. There are not a lot of Asians who play professional rugby. Do you feel that you have a chip on your shoulder and that you need to prove to everyone that Asians and half Asians can compete with the best in the world? I don't feel I have a, a chip on my shoulder. I feel that I have a role that I've been put on this earth to do and... and through my sport, I, I want to be able to inspire and influence as many people as I can. And I'm very grateful. I, I'm half Filipino, half English. So my sphere is slightly bigger. And, and I hope to make a difference, not just here in England, but also in Philippines. Because as I said, it, it holds a special place in my heart. And, and one day I will be doing things over there that will make me proud of myself and hopefully help many young people in Philippines get into rugby and get into sport and do the right thing because I see that as really important in, in my life. So, um, but with that, I'm still young and I need to improve my rugby. I've still got hopefully 10 more years or so in my career and I've just started. So I'm excited to see what the future holds if I keep working hard and, and keep enjoying my game. What does it take to become a good rugby player? I think for me, why the sport attractive is because it caters for all different shapes and sizes. There's some that are six foot six and 120 kilos. And there's some like me who are 5'10", 80 kilos. So the, the range of people that are able to play rugby, I think sh should encourage people to play. So whatever shape or size, th there'll definitely be a place for you on the field. I think you need to be mentally tough you need to be brave in terms of tackling these bigger guys you need to also be skillful enough to handle the ball and, and pass the ball as well are you planning on coming here and giving clinics to maybe filipino kids 
I've got a vision in my head that I want to help inspire and, and influence kids over there. I feel I was born there. I was given an opportunity over there in Philippines through my dad. And I want to help as many kids as I can because I generally feel the volcanoes are, are slowly rising and, and improving and increasing in media coverage. And who knows, in, in 10 years, 15 years time, where that team could be. So I'm a big supporter of the volcanoes as well. And my brother plays for them as well. So I've even got family ties there now. A lot of... Filipino kids look up to you now, you know, and are inspired by you and your brothers. What advice can you give these kids who would want to try and play the sport of rugby? I think first and foremost, it's to believe in yourself. If you've got a vision in your head that you want to achieve it in your life, I think positive affirmation and positive self-talk that you can do it as long as you work hard. I think that's a good starting point. And, and as well as that, it's just throw yourself into whatever opportunities that you have available to you. Put yourself in, whether that's basketball, whether that's tennis, whether that's football, rugby, whatever sport it is, I think there's definitely crossovers and, and skills that you learn through playing sport that will help you for the rest of your life. I think discipline, I think hard work, I think teamwork, I think like skill set in terms of confidence in yourself. I think there's a lot of um, lessons that you can learn from sport and it's, to everyone out there, just good luck, enjoy yourselves, and uh, stay safe. It's a rough sport. It's a tough sport. You have to be mentally and physically prepared for it. How do you prepare for your sport, for your matches? Um, for me, being physically slightly smaller than everyone, I've worked so hard on my skills. So my passing, my kicking. I, I try and treat the game as like my party, my expression of myself. So I do use the week, every minute I can in the week to improve myself, to prepare my body for the party at the end of the week. And I rely heavily on my preparation. So if I know that I've prepared as well as I could, I go out on the weekend with no pressure and I just enjoy the moment because we don't get to play this game for, for a very long time. As you said, it's a tough, physical, brutal sport and the career lengths are probably 10 to 15 years if you're lucky. So you, every single time you get the opportunity to, to step on the field, uh, you should be excited, you should be energized and uh, you should be ready to go. So that's that's how I try and try and think. Do you have a strict diet plan? I would say food is my kryptonite. I, I absolutely love food. Especially definitely. your Filipino side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's one of them things that I, I do in moderation. So I, I won't eat that much for three or four weeks and then let's say we have a family gathering either at my house or my uncle's or, or my mum's where there's loads and loads of food I'll enjoy that day but I think that's the key thing is, is about staying disciplined to know what I'm putting in and out of my body but also reconnect with with my with my Asian side and my Filipino side have all these endorsements for sportswear, drinks, supplements, and clothing. How are you taking all of this? It's been uh, a whirlwind sort of year since I've joined Rock Nation. I'm very grateful for what they've done for me and my family. It's strange because when I was younger, and I had visions of myself on a rugby field, but I didn't know what that would come with. I, did, I wasn't prepared for the endorsements, the media, um, all that stuff. So. Again, for me, it goes back to my family. That They're the best at keeping me grounded. They're the best at taking my mind off things. And I think that's important because otherwise you can get lost in all the off-field stuff when actually what's important to me is me and my family stay extremely close and I work as hard as I can on the field because then off the back of that, everything that I do off the field will be genuine and will come as a result, if that makes sense. So, yeah, no, it's, 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 it is weird, it is strange. But again, it, if you told me back then that I would have played this many games for, for Harlequins and, and, and stuff like this, but you have to do this, I would have taken it. So uh, I'm in a very privileged position. And with all the endorsements, it comes with a lot of responsibilities as well, because now you are a role model for a lot of people and a lot of the young kids. Yeah, 100% want to inspire young people all around the world to, to either pick up a rugby ball, but most importantly, enjoy themselves with whatever they're doing. And if I can help in any way I can, I'd love to help because I was very privileged when I was younger. I was given the opportunity and I'm sure there's many people who if given the opportunity that they, they take it as well. So I want to give as many people a, a chance as I can. I'll try my best. And you've also mentioned that you are very close to your family. How did they motivate you and push you 
to keep going and at the same time keep you grounded? I think firstly to keep me grounded my brothers are the first they constantly criticize my game they constantly have a go at me if I do something wrong and for me that's important I'm very lucky to have supportive brothers who miss their own games to come and watch me when I was younger so again I owe a lot to them my mum is very good at getting my mind straight she doesn't fully understand rugby she's got a lot better than she used to be in terms of getting my mind right she's unbelievable at it she knows how to focus me she knows how to push me in terms to make me slightly angry and it works in a in a beautiful way so um and my dad as well he's played rugby for 30 years probably when he was younger and um he knows rugby he gives me his honest opinions but also it gives me time to breathe so um because when you play professional sport it's so full on that once in a while it's it's nice to not talk about it and it's nice to live like a normal 24 year old, you know. I'm very lucky that I've got a good balance at home. Um, allows me to relax and also enjoy my life. What's next for Marcus Smith? So this year, it's a World Cup year, which is at, in 2023 over in France. World Cups in rugby happen every four years. And this for me will, will be a big step, hopefully touch wood in my journey. I'm desperate to get on that plane to France and play in this World Cup. It will, it will be my first one. So um, I'm excited about the potential opportunity. Uh, this summer beforehand, I'm going to America again to do some training on myself. I'm meeting with a NFL and NBA coach to do some training, trying to learn different skills and better myself as a person, as well as enjoy the summer sun of LA. And also my family over there. I've got some cousins and my aunties over there. So I'll see them and probably uh, sing some karaoke together with them. But I don't want to look too far ahead in terms of 10 years, five, uh, five years. For me, this year is probably the biggest year of my career to date and I want to get it right. So um, I'll commit as hard as I can to my preparation and then hopefully, God willing, um, I'll be there in, in the summer. Well, we wish you all the best, Marcos. Thank you for representing the Philippines and maraming salamat. Salamat po. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Stronger Together, the JMA Pinoy TV podcast is an original production of JMA International. This episode is produced by Gerald Vista and edited by Anton Taguidon. <laughs> <laughs>